Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our series of chats with data art experts on a variety of topics of interest, hopefully to our wide audience. My name is Alexi Miller, and I'm very happy to welcome Doron Fagelson, a key account executive with the media practice, uh, looking after an interesting, very interesting portfolio of work that here at Data Art, uh, primarily in the arts world. And this is what we're going to talk about. Um, art is maybe not something you expect a technology firm to spend a lot of time talking, but after all, in data art, there is art. You know, it's three sevenths of our name, so should be a substantial presence in all of our lives. And certainly it is, uh, thanks to Doron and uh, his team's work, substantial presence in data arts portfolio. Um, it probably goes without saying that the nature of art, what is art, the world of art, the business of art is changing before our eyes. So maybe, Doron, to get us started in broad strokes, uh, what is changing? How is the very notion of buying and collecting art changing? And we will then uh, move to trying to bring it to the implications to technology. Where do things stand? Excellent. Thanks for the introduction, Alexei, and very happy to be here. Um, I, I do think that this is a exceptionally exciting and interesting time for the art world at large. Um, and I, I think that there have been some really interesting technology trends impacting the art market of late. Um, and uh, I think that, um, you know, just sort of taking um, a step back and looking at the bigger picture and why this is so interesting. The art market really has been, I think, one of the sort of last bastions of, of remaining sort of a relatively analog um, operational uh, kind of ecosystem. Um, lots of intermediaries, um, lots of interperson sort of interactive uh, conversations leading to sales um, and leading to uh, people getting to know each other uh, and uh, exchanging and trading art. And it's really been that way for uh, the longest time. And of course, that still happens today. But there's been, I think, a very distinct shift uh, in the last couple of years in particular, um, where many businesses have realized, I think, that the enormous promise and potential of using technologies, using innovations uh, to really help to not only sell art, um, but, but also actually make art uh, a, a, have a bigger place in our culture and really bring it sort of more to the forefront of people's sort of interests and um, pastimes, uh, that, that that's something that they couldn't really ignore anymore. Um, and so uh, if you look back to say 2019, a couple of years ago, even before the pandemic, it was pretty evident then that um, the, the online channels, the online sales channels for art were really starting to kind of gather momentum. Um, you, you could see that the, the sort of traditional art market was kind of very slowly growing. I think that, you know, a, sort of a five year trend at that time uh, would have had maybe sort of like a five, six percent growth rate, right? Um, whereas the online art market was growing something like you know, 95 to 100 percent in the same time frame. So even though it was still sort of a sm much smaller proportion of the overall um, market, the online art market already had some momentum. Uh, and then, of course, with the pandemic, um, with all of those challenges of having to sort of close many of the main avenues for people to explore art and discover art and, and, and trade art, um, you know, the uh, closure of not only the galleries themselves and the museums, but also these very large um, art fairs that take place in sort of, you know, Miami uh, and, and, and Zurich and places in London. Um, many of those had to close or they had to be postponed or they had to go into an online format. Um, many of the in-person auction houses also had to uh, close or defer um, those events and uh, quickly pivoted to try to have streaming auctions. And I think all of that just gathered uh, an amazing uh, pace and, and acceleration um, really to, to sort of come to a point now where I think the art market is actually a very different type of market than it, it was even two years ago. Um, so and with that, that point, I, I, I did want to ask you something yes, before we yes. go too far. Um, in, I will betray my ignorance of the art market, but in, in any b business sector that I'm familiar with, there are those sort of legacy companies that are trying to catch up or keep up with the times and reinvent themselves. And there are always these uh, digitally native, technology native outfits that say, to hell with the old business model, we're inventing it from scratch. And uh, we've seen success of both models. 
um, in, in, in banking and in travel and other sectors that data art is involved in. What do, what do things look like in travel? What about those digitally native challengers, upstarts, and what are the legacy players doing to stay relevant? Yeah, I, that's a really good question. Um, and I do think that it's quite interesting to kind of see the, the progression here because uh, certainly I think a lot of the key players in the art market, um, the, the auction houses, uh, some of the top mega galleries, um, and, and the art fairs themselves, um, I think they uh, had kind of experimented, I would say, at best with uh, technology, digital solutions, um, but hadn't sort of really fully embraced them. And then I think had really left a vacuum. And so what you saw sort of starting around 2009, 2010, you saw some technology upstarts, players like Artnet, um, Artsy, Artbinder, um, Artbase. There's a number of them uh, that created marketplaces as well as inventory management tools um, uh, and uh, uh, sales channels, um, portable art galleries that could actually give uh, gallerists and give um, art dealers the ability to, say, at an art fair, show their inventory and show some of their works just through their mobile phone. Uh, many of those uh, players uh, had built platforms um, and had, uh, I think, established themselves um, but what has, of course, happened is uh, some of the auction houses, uh, galleries, those have also now really shifted to really pivot as well to embrace technology. And that is a challenge because I, I agree with you that those companies have legacy systems. Um, and so overhauling those legacy systems is a significant investment mm -hmm. uh, and really requires strategic thinking and planning um, uh, and being sort of nimble in terms of you know, how they're going to sort of unify some of these systems with some of the new technologies they're using. Um, so, you know, I see, you know, our role in, in this is uh, really being able to help those companies uh, to kind of come up with a, a vision of how they can do that um, effectively without at the same time, of course, losing the ability to, uh, to transact um, through these online channels and continue to sort of uh, do business as usual as, as well. Uh, so but it's a great on opportunity. That, on, that subject, on, on that subject, I imagine one of the biggest uh, challenges for online art viewing and buying and trading uh, are, are questions around security, provenance. Um, if you can't touch what you're buying or at least see it with your own eyes, you have to rely on someone else's opinion as well as perhaps, and I'm guessing here, some sort of technology to verify all of those provenance and security considerations. Can you talk to us about the technology that is involved in that process and what have you seen? This is definitely an interesting area because provenance um, and validity has always been one of the challenges for um, the art world. Um, there, there's always been, you know, particularly go back to sort of Renaissance art, um, I think there's always been some um, questions about certain works and their provenance and whether um, you can you know accurately uh, verify authenticity of course there's you know a whole uh, area of the art market that specializes in um, you know being able to uh, have experts look at artworks and confirm uh, through that expertise uh, whether something is legitimate and or forgery or not right. um, and, and I, I think that there are some new technologies trying to sort of uh, do that same verification by uh, using AI, by using um, uh, image recognition uh, software to be able to identify just from the image of a, a physical painting, for example, whether it's authentic or not. Well, Doron, I want to ask okay. you something. I imagine with online sales and online collecting, this sort of opens up the audience tremendously. Uh, the um, Previously, if you are not physically attending a gallery or speaking to a dealer or attending one of those art fairs, uh, you, you didn't have access to a lot of the artworks. Now, when, when and if everything is online, anyone in the world with interest and some capital could participate. Has the auction houses, has the art, art dealership market seen this kind of growth or explosion maybe in, in interest and, and capital being poured in into this? And what are, what are the proof points? The answer is certainly yes to the question of has there been 
uh, an influx of capital um, into these kinds of efforts to attract new audiences through digital solutions. Um, I think you can see uh, that um, in a sort of an, if you look at Sotheby's, for example, in a, in a number of ways, they have really expanded their sales channels. They've um, released in 2020 uh, a dedicated e marketplace for all kinds of collectibles, luxury goods, and artworks called Buy Now, which is basically a click to buy platform. Um, this uh, is um, really tailored to sort of a digitally native audience. Uh, and indeed, I think over 50% of the buyers on that platform in 2020 were first time buyers who had never transacted with Sotheby's before. So I think it was a great success purely from a standpoint of attracting a new type mm -hmm. of collector, as well as also uh, increasing online sales. Um, I also think that the, the uh, decision to not only have online auctions, but also to stream live auctions, which in part was a, certainly a product of the fact that you couldn't have in-person auctions for a time. Um, I think that also resulted in an uh, Im immense reach as never before. If you think about a typical you know, evening marquee auction, the sort of prestige auctions that Sotheby's, Christie's and Phillips put on, they might have 200 people in the room. Uh, the streaming auction that Christie's did, I believe it attracted, if you included their website uh, uh, participants as well as their social media channels, I think it uh, came to something like a wow. million viewers. Wow. Um, so if you look at the, the contrast there um, of how many more people, even if much of that was just an audience looking to watch and be entertained, uh, looking at that as a spectacle more than as a opportunity to really buy, um, it's still an ama amazingly massive. successful it's operation. Uh, they may be watching today, but they'll be buying tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, for sure. <laughs> exactly. And and I, I I would not be surprised if even once the the you know the the uh, fears that the pandemic has engendered have really subsided and we really sort of go back to a much more normal way of life. I would not be surprised if many of these initiatives, like streaming auctions, uh, continue to have value um, going forward, be just because that reach is really hard to replicate um, in a so physical. So, in, in that sort of auction, were you one of the million watching? <laughs> I did, did tune into one did, of them. I don't know if it was Chris's. It might have been Sotheby's. Did you buy anything interesting? Uh, I, alas, uh, was not able to buy anything. Um, as we, as we've the, seen, the other interesting thing is competition. A lot of competition. Uh, a lot of, uh, me, 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 I see. Uh, well, another breakthrough, another breakthrough trend uh, through the pandemic here was that uh, online auctions, in fact, really sort of generally uh, online art sales, um, had never really broken uh, barriers much above about, I think, a million uh, dollars price tag. That has been put put to rest, and I, I think that. Um, if, if, certainly if you include you know sales of nfts and um, they've gone into the multiple millions now even though people have never actually you know seen some of these works right. in person before right. buying them so that's also uh, i think a new um sort of a new era for the the art market in terms of people's comfort level of buying something that they hadn't bought before uh that might also just uh uh show that um as i think people have become much more comfortable generally with virtual life um, I think that there's sort of a, an element of trust that people now have with uh, just ch generally interacting, transacting digitally that, that has accumulated sort of just as a matter of course too. Right. Um, and, and that's important, of course, when you're buying so expensive it's works. It's very interesting. And it's, uh, it sounds like on one hand, the art market has massively expanded its audience. On the other hand, the prices have been pushed up so much because of the success capital that it may have put some of the artworks out of reach for to collectors previously. Very interesting. Let's pause here. Um, Doron, thank you so much for the chat. I, I'm sure this series is to be continued.